Hello and welcome to the Red Zone Podcast, Episode 4, Padding International Tabletop Day. What? This is Elvin. And I'm JR. <laughs> and no, we are not going to do that. That's just the title of the podcast. We're going to talk about the recent magic emergency bannings, as well as something a little bit more palatable, the International Tabletop Day, which occurred on 29th of a... Up to a couple of minutes ago, I thought it was today. Technically, when we are recording this, it is today? Because if you think about no, it... No, 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 it's the 29th. Oh, it's yeah. It's the 30th. Well, yeah. Now. It's, uh, no, no, but I mean, earlier this day... It was the 29th in the US. Yeah, but didn't we Until did, didn't, noon. didn't we think that it was the 30th up, up to like last night or did I we? think it's because all right um, or because well, of the we knew that it was like the morning of it was uh yeah whatever. Well, well, there were a lot of different things happening. So yeah. Uh we'll talk about that in a little bit. But first of all to for most of our listeners who are generally folks that play magic we'd like to talk about tabletop games so uh gr from your understanding what are tabletop games well technically magic is a tabletop game it's mm-hmm. not a, it's not a board game but it is a tabletop, it's a game. tabletop game it's also a uh sometimes it's a floor top game and sometimes it's floor even top. a yeah a desktop it's just a table yeah. a desk is a kind of table right no because you used to play it in school and our uh, desk had oh yeah the arm the arm small... thing well not the arm thing it okay um our desks have these door small doors that uh, that sort of fall down into your lap and so you could actually play cards there and then when the teacher comes by you sort of push your your knees upward and it sort of closed the door and your cards so fall everywhere <laughs> Yeah, all all our all our dual lands, because <laughs> this is yeah. back in the nineties, so people didn't really care that much. I that guess. was that was much today, but so yeah, so that's uh, for our listeners. Tabletop games are just games that are generally played in the real world, but usually at a static area, um, a tabletop essentially. Uh, essentially, um, like ninety, I guess ninety or. 80% of uh, tabletop games are board games. So look at it like board games and other games that are similar-ish that may not necessarily have a board that comes with it, right? Or card games. Or maybe no, not, not 80% board games, but maybe 40% board games, 40% uh, card games, and the rest are, you know, miniatures and everything else. Does that, does yeah, that sound well, like fair numbers? Uh, yeah. I wouldn't. I, I, I no, can't not, say. We're not what aiming for numbers, exact number, but, but but yeah, it's something like that. Yeah, it's a combination of those things, uh, different different types of games. But generally, they all share the fact that it's played over a surface. Um, it's not electronic. Not necessarily going to be electronic. It's not going to be yeah, something yeah, that's yeah. online. Na- nowadays, it's not. It's not not electronic, but not necessarily electronic, because because some of them have exactly. electronic components now. Well, yeah, guess, nowadays. Well, well, I guess even before they had, but not. Oh yeah, not just, like today. there was this old game called um, Wizard's Tower, if I recall correctly, and you play. You, it would. It's like an LED that was running in the middle of your game. Of your play area, you'd press a button and it'd start ticking down or something, and then you'd play the game. And then sometimes the words would like make sound effects and whatnot. So it's yeah, yeah. You know, there, there are a lot of games early... that had some uh, simple electronics involved. Exactly. Well, in recent years, um, tabletop game had a sudden resurgence, resurgence, especially among adults who remember these old types of games in their youth and then realize that Monopoly, Uno, and those types of games won't really cut it anymore. And they found that there are actually better, more sophisticated games that are out there. Not just uh, more sophisticated in design of play, but also sophisticated in subject matter as well as um, aesthetics. Case in point, um, there are um, there is even a performance art uh, board game called uh, Train, if I recall correctly, which was in a museum in the U.S. 
And essentially, it is a game where a, a game to to promote an idea or to evoke a feeling. So it was art in the highest form, but it's a it's technically a board game. So let me paint you a picture here, Jr. So technically a board game so, or technically a tabletop game? It's a tabletop game. Yeah. yeah. So because there's it was you play it at the at the museum itself. So essentially, there are you have little um, boxes and little people, little yellow people that you put in the boxes. And you're drawing cards that are like written on a typewriter. It has that type of aesthetic. And then you're getting people and moving them to the cars. And then you're moving the cars out, out of your train yard. And then over time, the text on the cards make you realize that you are actually in World War II. You're a German train officer and you're loading Jews into trains to be shipped off to the gas chambers. And now, all of a sudden, it turn, it goes from a game where you're trying to be as efficient as possible in sending these Jews, these these little yellow people, into to their deaths, essentially, to trying your best to avoid getting them into the trains or redirecting them. And it cost, uh, causes a lot of um, anxiety, especially about people who are um, who have relatives or are themselves uh holocaust survivors have ex- or even of that type of that um or that descent have expressed feelings of anxiety and horror um from something as simple as a board game so this is just an example of how these tabletop games have evolved from the early days of monopoly and risk how early was monopoly Monopoly occur, uh, was published during. Occurred, yeah, well, the, it, 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 that uh, actually works well, it, too. It, it did occur because <laughs> J.P. Morgan, I think, was the model for the Miss uh, Uncle Moneybags. Oh, is he? Uh, but if I recall correctly, yeah, if I recall correctly, J- uh, the Monopoly set, uh, the game of Monopoly, was released during the Great Depression. Ah. And and uh, interesting note, Monopoly was. Created as a way to poke fun, or is it like a satire against monopolies in the U.S.? Um, that's the reason why it's very monotonous. And wait, so it, really, so uh, penny bags is J.P. Morgan? Uh, Uncle Money Bags, yes. Nineteen thirty-five. Oh, Nineteen thirty-five, according to Wikipedia. Uh, without looking at the picture, does uh, Money Bags have eyewear? Does Money Bags have eyewear? Um. He, I, I think he, I think he doesn't. I think he has a watch, though. Really? Because everyone would say he has a what do you call that monocle? That's because of the Ace Ventura movie. Yes. Ace Ventura when nature, uh, when nature, what's it called? Nature calls. When nature calls, yes. Yeah, that and is. And he cr- got he punches the guy. He punches the guy and goes, um, "That is um, correct." Because that, that, there's a topic about false memories, like. What people normally think about, like remember, uh-huh. remember Kazam? Because Shazam oh, the- or Kazam, the Shaq, the Shaq move, the the movie of Shaquille O'Neal. So what Shazam? It's Shazam or Kazam. Yeah, because because most people remember Shazam with Sinbad, but there it didn't exist. It's just Kazam with Shaquille O'Neal. And well, Shazam was a cartoon from the early seventies. Uh, yeah, yeah, early... but we're talking about the movie in the nineties. Yeah, yeah, movie and, in the people, 90s and, is and all like Sinbad. most Americans thought they, they still think that there's a Shazam with Sinbad. Oh, okay. So, well, yeah, there's a topic about those false memories, and and the other one is the uh, his, uh what Uncle Moneybags having a monocle. Uncle Moneybags, yeah. yeah all but right. that but that one's traceable. That's yeah, that's because of Jim Carrey. But uh, I don't know about how, what what Sinbad. Yeah, the Sinbad thing. But anyway. Yeah, but going back to the topic, so we so that's what tabletop games are. Going from something as uh, from something as basic as Candyland or Monopoly to something more uh, complex like uh, Gloomhaven and a uh, train, um, which we uh, Gloomhaven is actually uh, like a like a um, like a role playing game, except there's no. Dungeon Master. Well, well, te- technically, a, a role playing game is still a tabletop. It's game. also tabletop. Exactly. It's also a role playing game is also a tabletop game. So, in comparison to Magic, 
tabletop games share a lot of uh, thematic elements, but not necessarily mechanics. Um, because that's not really a fault of magic, but more of just how diverse the mechanics of tabletop games are. And and, 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 from... and the themes. Because, I mean, exactly. They would share some thematic elements if if the if the tabletop game features a fantasy theme, of course. But if the tabletop game is about like you know robotics or something, which exists, then I mean it would be different, right? Yeah, exactly. That's a good point. Um, we have different types of themes and different types of 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 mechanics. So both aesthetic and mechanic can be very different from magic, but that doesn't make it any less um, of a tabletop game. Um, Would you say that uh, tabletop games are like anime in the sense that there's an anime about everything? I guess there's a cartoon about everything. Um, by anime in particular, like the genre, you mean? I guess, yeah. No, that no, makes because sense. anime specifically, there's an anime about everything yeah because of the just how because they're just, they're just uh, prolific are. <laughs> japanese are so yeah they, i guess, w- I guess. Would tabletop, tabletop games go as far i mean it's would possible. you go as far as saying that there's a tabletop game about anything i guess right? i'm sure there is i'm sure there i'm sure there is just that it won't be as famous as yeah it's I mean, possible right. to be published you know but i don't think there are um, the biggest barrier for that is there aren't that many dark tabletop games. Tabletop games that are like really, really twisted. Mainly because it's it's there's a very small audience for it. Well, there is uh, gloom, I, but that's more of a um, comedic uh, dark. It's more black humor, similar uh, similar in the vein of like that movie with Jack Sparrow guy. <laughs> that movie with Jack Sparrow guy. What? The actor who played Jack Sparrow. Is Johnny um, Depp. How do you not know that? Uh, sorry, okay. Johnny Depp has a movie where he played the vampire. Uh, Something Shadows. Dark Shadows. Dark Shadows. There you go. So it's kind of like that. Which is a remake. That by the humor. Way. I mean, no, not a remake. Uh, it was a series machine. in the 70s. Yeah. So International Tabletop Day in particular was once was not really something that was done up until the efforts of folks in the uh, Geek and Sundry who created their own... Yeah, that's the other thing. Like, we all know that there's a resurgence. Like, the tabletop games never really disappeared. They were always... Or, or no, no, they're board always game, there. Board games, just... board games specifically. Because not tabletop yeah. games. Because magic has always been famous. But uh, board games specifically... Never really mm-hmm. disappeared, but yeah, as you mentioned, there there is a current uh, resurgence. Is that mm-hmm. partly because of Will Wheaton's tabletop? It's vi- that's a big part of it. Um, personally, I've been playing tabletop games for a long time, and the Will Wheaton tabletop, uh, tabletop yeah, uh, came out. Was it 2014, 13? Uh, yeah, I think there there's uh, this is the third season yeah i'm not sure so, if they've been shooting every year but this is the third season and before that i remember going to like small meetups with game organizations of people that um are like me enjoyed uh board games but then after um will wheaton came well not really after but we started uh ramping up after we found a local distributor who wanted to run games in a bigger venue and then I'm not sure if it's coincidence, but then Will Wheaton's show started coming up in, uh, started on YouTube, and it just took off because people just wanted to play the games that he was playing. You know, I, I think it's not uh, not just Will Wheaton specifically, but I strongly feel that YouTube has a lot to do with it. Because what do you think is the aspect of YouTube that makes it makes the tabletop made... games more appealing? No, it's not. It's not the aspect of YouTube that makes it appealing. It's it's because the younger crowd. Uh, I mean, is well, we do refer to them as the YouTube generation. Mm-hmm. So everyone is watching YouTube all the time, and because of this sheer number of uh, board game and tabletop content in YouTube, I guess, because because board games are good, it's just that people don't realize it, of course, or at least that's what we think. And then even the younger yes. generations don't uh, see them; they they play uh, video games and stuff, right? And then they mm-hmm. watch YouTube, and then you see board games, and then like one curious kid sees board games and figures, oh, I want to try that, and tells another kid, and it dominoes. But like, like the the fastest way to that board games probably got to these kids 
was I think is YouTube. Well, YouTube is a visual medium, yeah, and it and people don't really have commercials for um, board games anymore. Uh, if you remember back in the day, Dungeons Parker and Brothers Dragons. was actually. Well, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons would have commercials, but also remember um, the old, um, like the Parker Bar- Parker Brothers games, like Monopoly or ga- the Game of Life or Risk. They'd actually have commercials for them. Um, I, on know, TV. I know, I know, the Game of Life had a lot of commercials. I, I have, I have not seen the rest. Yeah, they're um, on the one hundred uh, one million chance of a lifetime. It's like an old TV show, and they had that commercial for uh, Parker Brothers. The same thing with uh, home games of various uh, TV game shows. They would have home versions of Jeopardy, of Pusher Luck, which is in essence are tabletop games. Yeah, no, it's just that the 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 more, more complex ones and the more like dare we say the better ones don't really advertise that way. Because like th- those games, th- games like Catan, for example, existed for a while, but like they're not never going to be as famous as Monopoly or. You know. I remember Settlers of Catan coming out around the same time as uh, one of the expansions of Magic. I think Chronicles. Yeah, it's uh, been a long time, right? So I mean, yeah, that's, I mean not as long as Monopoly or or and everything else, of course. But, uh, but it, yeah, but that's the point. It's every those games have been out a long time, but you just don't see them. But now, like I said, um, everyone's playing them on YouTube. A lot of the uh, TV shows, you see people playing board games now. Like, I mean, before in the 90s, you wouldn't see the cast of Friends playing a, a board game on set, right? But but now mm-hmm. you, you, you watch Big Bang Theory. Well, of course, because that's uh-huh. a show about geeks. But you see them playing all these board games. And I think that also has something to do with it. Mm-hmm. So, so, yeah. We have to uh, realize that people now are trying to slow down their lives. Uh, um, uh, there's a certain portion of people nowadays who I don't want to call them hipsters, but who uh, people that enjoy but you just slower did. things. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's I, I don't think it's a it's a hipster strictly a hipster thing, but people who appreciate time, people who appreciate sitting around the table and playing a game. Um, that isn't going to be yeah. yeah actually, like, now that I think about super, it, now that I think about it, it's actually. Uh, yeah. A bunch of different things that mm-hmm. that coincidentally it gets like all the planets aligning, which mm-hmm. uh, the, the, which gave uh, board games. Res- I mean, which brought up the board game resurgence. Because yeah, the, the hipster uh, crowd is a big part of that reason. So, so yeah, mm, yeah. And the way that designers make games nowadays, it fits within a certain period. It's no longer hours upon hours which is like what happened with a uh, monopoly and now it's going to be much uh, much more manageable uh, sometimes even less than an hour yeah, yeah but but like the hours upon hours thing from before I, I mean even from even before i think it's just monopoly that plays that long on the other board games risk takes a long risk takes a long time because if you risk were, if you're risk takes a long through, time if you take a long time to do your turns no no but okay if a single unit rolls really, really well against a large army, they can continuously repel attackers. Yeah, but which that, is from... yeah, but the chances of that actually happening are well. There's an, there's actually there are actually risk calculators out there. There's a, like there are apps, and the chances yeah. for that are aren't really big. So you can't really say that it's it's normal. I mean that though, there are games like that but those are outliers but like on the average mm-hmm. if if you play fast risk could be a fast game but like monopoly like regardless of how fast you do your turns it's going to be a long game yeah, so cuz well that's because of the die rolling yeah there is a way to cheat well not cheat but the optimum play of monopoly has you buying certain properties which are always optimal as far as dice rolling is concerned people will always stop on these areas and really just make you get you so much money that you run away with it um oh and actually uh, the, the you do know that the only reason why monopoly takes so long for some people is because they're playing it wrong and uh please elaborate the the bidding part uh, most people are not aware of the bidding part mm-hmm. and if you want me to elaborate more which i assume you do 
But I know, mm-hmm. of course, I think you know the rules, right? So when yeah. you, when you land on a property and you, if you do not decide to oh, buy it for for yeah. the printed price, a bidding mm-hmm. starts, which yep. starts at zero, and anyone can bid can bid any number to buy a property. The thing that most people aren't aware of, I, I, well. Uh, most well, people are not aware of the bid. Do. Most people are not aware of bidding, but most of the people who are aware of bidding are also not aware of one other thing regarding the bidding. If you're the one who landed on the property and decide not to buy it for tag price, you can also be part of the bidding. So some, mm-hmm. so, so what some people do is you land in a property. Oh, I, I want this property. I don't want the other players to bid cheap on this property, so I'm just going to buy it for tag price. But they don't realize that they could also just bid. So if everyone just bids, it's it's really fast. Well, we, um, for that particular mechanic, it's also supposed to be a way for you to jack up the price for the one that's going to, to eventually buy it. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's a really big deal that if you don't know that the the person landing doesn't have to pay full retail, it, you know, it adds hours upon hours. I mean, it sounds like a simple rule that just people are just uh-huh. not aware of but it really adds a lot of time if you not if you're not aware of that rule yeah. you should try it but once the, the, <laughs> no i don't think so it's, it's it, but that's the thing monopoly is sort of like the game that everybody feels that they they, they know but then people don't really want to read the rules and speaking of rules and way that it's taught um, tabletop games have gone a long way from the very basic and vague instructions um, back in the day to now there are more comprehensive rule books and even videos online that show you how to play a certain game um, correctly. I, I think that might also so, be one of the reasons for the board game resurgence because before you'd have to read rules and now you can just watch a video of someone teaching you how to play it online. Exactly. I think it's more palatable because of a way that you can understand the game without having to read a whole yeah, block cause, of cause, text. Because remember like when you bought a board game as a, as a kid, uh, you mm-hmm. don't really want to read it but if someone w- is willing to teach it to you, you'd, you'd be willing to play it. Now like there's yeah, I'm one ton, of those of kids that, would that be... read the, that read the rule book. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, but most people are. I guess so. I was the one that would teach the ones that would be playing. So, yeah, so. in any case, um, so tabletop games have changed a lot, and um, international tabletop is an example of how much it's changed. Um, people all over the world go to their local uh, game shop and uh, even uh, game cafes where they would play games. And I think there was even a, a 24-hour gaming event where they would play games uh, overnight. Yeah. Oh, Geek and Sundry had a 18-hour stream. And they're playing different games each time, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then I think that's almost a tradition because they did that uh, the same thing for last year and the year before. You know, it's, it's still pretty cool to see people that are familiar to you play all these really interesting games. Mm-hmm. So that, uh, unfortunately, it's over. And all, the only thing that we can do is just look forward to next year. Hopefully, we'll be, not be as busy as we were this year. Maybe we'd be even be able to uh, join certain events for International Tabletop Day. Yeah, you want to explain like the difference. On International Tabletop Day, aside from there being a lot of people playing, like are there a ton of differences? From, from your regular day, day. And I think uh, we should talk about that. Well, the biggest thing that I'm aware of in for International Tabletop Day is Geek and & Sundry and encourages individuals to call in during their um, International Tabletop Day. Um, the, during the first International Tabletop Day, I recall the live stream where they were, uh, various members of Geek & Sundry, particular people from Tabletop, would be playing games and then from time to time they'd kick off to their field reporter in the sense, who would be looking in at the crowd at each game store and just interacting. Um, has there been any other changes since then? Well, changes or I mean, or anything else that's happening? For for International Tabletop Day, did they change anything beyond that format where there would be a uh, main tabletop gaming that the group would do and then there'd be other side events? No, I, I guess for, uh, for some it's just that, I mean for some, I guess it depends on where. For other uh, venues, they'd have... Uh, multiple tournaments 
like there's not not a main table but just multiple games running D- at the same time tournaments. yeah with uh and of course you have these um like smash up for example has uh a sort of a draft no it's not a draft kit but it, it's a set that you would buy just for international mm-hmm. tabletop day and and you would mm-hmm. have a it's called smash up all stars and you would have the all star oh. factions in in i think maybe a, an eight faction set instead of mm-hmm. instead of having to buy different factions so so in in short we, we there's a lot more exclusive um products products uh, for international tabletop day and you know some of them are actually useful some are just collectible but but mm-hmm. yeah there it's it's be- becoming a bigger deal because you could only get those things there so it, it, in essence it's almost like mini well not mini but mm-hmm. Uh, like Comic Con ish, where you have things mm-hmm. that you can just buy in Comic Con, but but mm-hmm. here you you mean you can buy them in your store as long as they're participating, but you can only buy only buy them on that day. So so exactly yeah. yeah. So uh, that among uh, besides just the live coverage as well as special prizes, special door prizes uh, that they have for that particular event. You know, tabletop day is something that um, our audience, even if you play Magic. Um, I think you'd enjoy. Do you believe there like there would be non-standard games running? Because um, especially since these are more in line with the theme of fun and um, inclusiveness that uh, tabletop day brings. Yeah, I think for the ones that are running here locally, they also have a lot of uh, uh, teach me how to play this board game kind of a tape like tables and stuff. So mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's perfect for someone who who wants to get into board games. Yeah. Um, although if it doesn't, then it's it's fine. Uh, if you if they don't, you're not you're not able to catch it this year. Um, next year, I'm sure there's going to be another one for international tabletop day. Well, well, we're not sure, but we hope so, right? Well, I I do believe it's going to be something that's going to be more. <laughs> well, it it is finding consistent. success, so so yeah. Exactly, and I there's no stop. It's not slowing down, even though. Um, tabletop the TV, the uh, the YouTube show is only showing um, episodes in a delayed manner because they have this strange thing that they do. Anyway, uh, I'm not aware of that, but yeah, yeah, that's why that's the reason why the show isn't really coming up as often. But you know, it's not really a place to comment on that. So, but anyway, that's uh, international tabletop day. Okay. The next thing you want to talk about is the event that occurred just this Thursday. Was it was it Thursday or Friday? Definitely not Friday. Okay, I think it's, um, it might be around Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Um, Ban list uh, for Magic the Gathering was announced uh, Monday, right? Yeah, essentially, that's Magic what? Magic has a set of days where they announce. Uh, changes or lack thereof to the banned and restricted list. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, every I, I'm assuming everyone that's listening to this part is playing Magic, so so if or 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 at least know about it is interest or interested or about, is interested about, about the banned list. Where yeah. essentially you have, because it may not be that um, common for common. standard, but but for legacy vintage modern and all the other formats there's a list of cards that you cannot play because they're just too powerful in vintage there's even a, a list of cards that you can only play one copy of because they're uh, too powerful in in multiples but just right if you have just one copy so anyway so we all we also actually still also have that for standard it's just that you rarely have Cards that are bad for standard. Yeah. So what happened re- recently, um, a few months ago, was three cards in standard were bad, and this caused ripples in, um, in the standard community because cards in standard aren't normally bad. Um, you've been around longer than I have uh, in Magic, especially in this recent Magic environment. When was the last time that the card was banned in standard before the events of the Smuggler's Copter? I think it was uh, Jace TMS. Oh, it, so that uh, mine, uh, the mine, sl- mine uh, sculptor, sliver? mine sculptor, and uh, the in the call blade deck. So that was banned on when it was out in standard. Yes. Oh. So every, I, recall, it, I know the, the, the meta. The also. meta now is actually not that bad. The meta then, like, was you you could only play Cobblade. Only play Cobblade. Wow. 
That's yeah. crazy. What is cobblade? I'm sorry. This is I'll, I'll say the topic, but what is cobblade? It's uh, it's called cobblade because uh, there's squadron hawks, which is a okay. a. Oh yeah, it's a, it's a bird that when you cast. It's a, it's it's a it's one in a white. Um, I forgot if it's one one or one two. It's one in a white, one two flying. When you cast it, you can search for all copies of it from your deck and put it in your hand. Okay, all, all. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh-huh. so that's the call and blade because it runs swords. Mm. But, but it so so it was a viable deck. Like it, it was named Cobblade because it was already the Cobblade deck then. But then uh, Channel Fireball broke it, or I, I'm actually not sure if they were already Channel Fireball there. But it was, uh, I think it was LSB and and his. A group who broke the deck uh, by adding uh, Stoneforge Mystic to it. Mm-hmm. So back then you just play uh, uh, blue white. Uh, Stoneforge Mystics, uh, mm-hmm. Mystic uh, comes in. You you uh, you get a sword. You play your bird. You attach the sword to your bird. It attacks. You win. It's mm-hmm. it's that simple. And then the next set they printed a Batter Skull. So mm-hmm. it, it was just. You know. It was just stupid at that point. Mm, I see. I, I think uh, be, before it, that, the, the the last banning was the Affinity stuff, which was 2004. So it was also a long time. Yeah, well, banning, because banning in standard is not common because it's usually one of the more recently designed. And so there's really, uh, well, there wouldn't be an impetus for anyone to change something that just Came out. It's not just that. It's R and D or re- research and development. Designs yeah. design cards so that they would be fair for standard. It yeah. should be fair without having to ban anything, or at least as far as they've tested it. So if if but of course we only have like what maybe twenty guys doing that, mm-hmm. trying all magic rules. Oh, I guess there is that that is their job and they have to do it uh forty hours a week. But but still, I mean you you it's still possible to miss something, right? Exactly. It's not um but speaking of missing something, that's one of the reasons why this emergency ban heard, or at least why there's a lot of talking about this ban because. Um, what was banned retroactively for Monday was a card that really flew underneath the radar of um, of R and D, and they did say that they weren't able to catch it. And this card is the Feldar Guardian, and they didn't realize how it, how much it interacted with the well, Sahidi. Well, it's it's not because of how much it interacted. It's just that they missed the combo to be exactly precise. exactly. So uh, the fact that it caused a uh, essentially a splinter twin combo, an infinite combo to occur in um, a two card infinite combo to occur, uh, occur in standard, mm-hmm. um, which was uh, too much. And um, yeah, and, and well, if, I, if anyone's curious why they banned Felidar, but they didn't ban the splinter twin, uh, splinter twin combo when with, when it was out, because they actually designed the splinter twin combo to exist. In that meta game, in in standard and Felidar, they didn't. They it just they just didn't. So when when Splinter Twin was out, they they obviously had cards which maybe um uh, were faster or reacted or to it, it or reacted yeah. to it like uh, in a bad way or something like that. But but now mm-hmm. it, it was just not part of the design. Exactly. But the thing is, they were expecting it to um really be fought by other decks, especially with the arrival of Amon Tet. Uh, but, uh, which is the reason why the banning didn't occur last Monday, because uh, there was high expectation, apparently, from R&D, from, Ma- from Wizards, that the arrival of the new set would actually help uh, mitigate some of the brokenness that was Sahili four color cap combo, but yeah. then yeah, they actually because they actually res- uh, uh, released the set earlier in MTGO, mm-hmm. and and I actually think that they did that on purpose specifically because of Sahili because they wanted to gather mm-hmm. data. Yeah, well, that's sort of the reason why they said that they did it because 
of the data that they gathered from since Monday. Yeah, and, um, yeah, and what I mean by d- they did that in purpose is is um the the set uh comes later and M- normally comes later in MTGO compared to paper. This is I I, I I may I may be wrong, but I think this is the first time that they released on MTGO earlier. And yes, like yes, I said, I, I believe it's it's because they wanted to gather data, which which I, which I think is wrong. Well, really. Why? No, I mean, because... To the, gather data early? No, 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 not to gather data early, but... Well, yeah, actually, to gather data after... We need to gather just four days or something worth of data. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think that's... I mean, it's a lot of tournaments, but uh, people haven't really had... I mean, it's a lot of games, but people didn't really have time to brew to make other decks mm-hmm. that would go against the Sahili decks. So, I mean, of course, what you do when a new set comes up is you try to upgrade the the, the, the deck that you currently have, right? That's the first thing mm-hmm. you do. And then maybe yeah. look for other decks. So, like, in, in less than a week, what you would see is people upgrading their Sahili decks. Mm-hmm. Like, you you won't see people doing good with their brews because those because newly brewed decks obviously won't be as streamlined as as existing decks so if if ever that uh-huh. there's going to be a that there was going to be a deck that is going to be very dominant against a Zahidi deck you wouldn't see it the first week or at least it yes, wouldn't uh, wouldn't be as smooth running this the first week so i, I just don't think it it makes sense well that's uh, wizard said that that was the main reason but um and, and it, they, it was, there's it was. been i just don't think it makes sense what i think they should have done was just you know have the balls to just ban it on on, on the actual ban announcement day instead of making an emergency exactly. ban after mtgo because i know yeah. they're it, like they're avoiding a pr disaster by the by banning it, by banning it, but you I mean if they if they weren't sure that a new deck would beat it, then you know rather than not banning it and making an emergency ban, they should have um tried to should we say cut their losses and just ban it uh, either way. That's something that everybody was telling uh, Magic RD to do, and that wasn't really happening. Um, and as it and as I said before, they expected that would uh. It, that all the enemies uh, of uh, four colors Hindi would improve, but then after playtesting in uh, MTGO, they realized that Sahili just got better with the cards came from um, from the set, and so because of that, they ca- they said that's one of the reasons. But they also mentioned a uh, pizza and letters that they received from uh, from fans. Pizza? Yeah, they said that a pizza was sent to their office. Which told them to ban the Feldar Guardian, and they did that because of the pizza. Well, that uh, the, in the press release they mentioned the pizza as one of the factors that they considered. Yeah. I guess it's I a guess that's more, a joke. Uh, tongue in cheek, it's a joke, but that doesn't mean that it did happen. They did get a pizza that with it said um, please no, ban uh, Feldar Guardian. Feldar. And, yeah, and, and, apparently- and this actually says a lot of. of- who wizards values more like do they value the casual players more or the competitive to pro player level uh, players more because obviously the casual players like the casual to a bit little bit competitive player would would hate this banning Mm -hmm. because they have to spend more in in essence but Mm -hmm. every competitive player would agree to this banning I'm sure because uh, it's obviously over overpowered. I mean, even if you had the deck, I, I guess you had the deck because it's not because you know, obviously it was too powerful. But then, if 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 you're really that into the game and really at the competitive level, if they ban it, then it's okay. You just make your just make a new deck. You're not gonna be mad that they banned your deck, right? Because you know it's broken. Yes, you have a good deck, but other people would be playing that deck too, and it would mm-hmm. obviously bet. If we're talking about skill. Because you want to win because you're good, not just because you had a good deck, and you want to be good. Then, then you'd want the game to be as fair as it could be, regardless of, uh, I mean, not regardless, but because of uh, what's in the current set. So, I mean, I, all all the pros would obviously agree to this, or and even just high level competitive players. Well, high level competitive players is also one of the reasons that that research went with this. But nobody really is angry at the banning itself. No, what everybody's not, upset about. Oh wait, well, sorry, go on. Yeah, well, sorry, but uh, what I mean is, 
um, what they were upset about was the fact that, well, this is um, you know uh, from passage, uh, and from listening to the news is that what they were really uh, annoyed at was the fact that it was delayed. That um, a lot of people couldn't really make an uh, make an alternate deck in time. No, I, I think in time for what though for for this weekend. Yeah. Well, if Just we're talking if, if we're talking about competitive play, most of the decks. I mean, most of the uh, competitive tournaments running the weekend after the release are limited mm-hmm. anyway. Limited format, mm-hmm. sealed uh, draft, etc. So uh, again, if most of so who who's playing, who who's complaining then? I mean, right? It, well, it, it must be uh, the not so competitive group. I well, assume. there are people that are competitive that were that, um, especially people that were going to the tournaments, especially coming from different locations. Um, I can't remember, but there, there, I there watching. aren't any, there aren't any GPs this weekend. Well, I guess if you mean because if you're referring to the Star City Games tournament, then yes, yeah, that, but that, I believe but, that that's the one. Yeah, but because SEG always makes a tournament right after the set, they always do, and the reason yeah. why Wizards doesn't do that is to give. Uh, people time to brew and to get their cards. Yeah, and, and, and speaking of brew, um, this is actually a very well. I believe uh, this banning, even ill timed as it is, is is a good thing, especially since now um, brewing is sort of wide open. Yeah, it's it's well, every technically every set brewing is wide open unless you have an oppressive deck. So it, it should be it should actually be the not. Because right now we're like happy that it's happening and and like it's yeah. a celebration, but it shouldn't be that way. It should actually be the norm. But uh, I mean, it hasn't happened for the longest time because of the copter, and then Felidar. But it it shouldn't be that way. And for the people who are uh, pissed about what what's happening because they had to go to the SCG tournament, I mean, they need to realize that the reason why SCG is uh doing the tournament right after the release date is. So people would buy their pre-orders, which are ridiculously free priced. Or well, not everything, but most of them. Or well, not ridiculous, but higher than usual. Mm-hmm. If you have a tournament on Saturday and you want to make sure that you have all the cards for your brew, then you put an order for pre-order so you get them Friday, right? Well, that's sort of what the what they did for the four cards. Uh, yeah, and, and, since, they, and uh, since they uh, there wasn't a ban on Monday, then everyone did their pre-orders or whatever, order. right? And exactly. Then, and then that exactly. happened, so it, it did, but. Uh yeah I guess what I'm saying is yeah wizards screwed up but I mean it, that's but there there are reasons why they try why why they don't special uh, don't schedule special events on on the day after the release it's to give people time to do what they need to do and mm. if if there wasn't an SEG tournament that weekend then a lot less people would be pissed so so you know it it makes sense. I mean, I guess I know that both entities are trying to make money and you know are looking out for themselves. But it's it's kind of hard. With, like which uh, which you should side with. But but I mean, bottom line is the ban. The, this banning is good as far as the game is concerned. Like yeah, that's not really the the, 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 the non financial aspect. Yes, the, the question in people's minds really. Um, like why didn't they announce it earlier? But we did k- touch upon that. But so going back to the fact, uh, what you mentioned earlier, what I well, what I mentioned earlier, is that this opens brewing wide open. What does exact what exactly does that mean? Um, uh, for brewers now that um, uh, now that the combo is gone. No, because because the, the thing is, uh, a lot of decks could actually exist, except that it doesn't have a way to interact with the combo deck, mm, uh-huh. and th- and that shouldn't be the case. I mean, in 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 because because in modern, for example, yeah, you could say that for modern. I mean, how is that possible? Because for modern, you always have you you sh- also should always have a way to interact oh, yeah. with combo decks. But for more because for modern, because it's the number of cards, because of the card pool, it's actually easier to do that. But for a standard set, it, it's not. It's always. It's I mean, it's not just that simple to insert a card that interacts with the combo. So it, it shouldn't be in everyone's. Like uh, priority to have uh, combo reacting pieces on their main deck, unless of course that's how the set was designed, which was um, how the like the when Splinter Twin was in standard, where they actually had cards that reacted to it 
which you have in your deck anyway. So that that's the difference. There are certain parts of it, uh, certain cards that are only there to interact with Sahili that are similar to cards that would help you against the second best deck in the, in the set, which is Mardu Vehicles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, case in point, there's this card that deals two damage and exiles a card, uh, exiles the creature. But then because of Sahiri deck, um, sideboards would not pack that card. They'd instead pack the Shock, which is good to fight Sahiri, but substandard in dealing with threats from... Um, uh, from more vehicles, especially since they keep coming back. Yeah. yeah so um, as far as um, brewing decks, um, have you? You know, it's been a couple of days. Have you seen any interesting brews uh, as a result from this banning? Drake's Haven was always been the the brewer's favorite ever since the spoiler came out. Uh, aside from that, there haven't really been any brews aside from the Drake Haven deck that. Uh, as uh, at least as far as we've, we've seen in in the SCG tournament, most are just um, upgrades to like there's a black green deck, a white green deck. Well, I, I guess the white green deck is sort of a brew, but it's the it's just standard mid range formula. Like you put a uh, a bunch of yeah. good creatures in a curve that works. So, yeah. n- but aside from actual brews that are actually that are different and just not just uh, decks that that use the best cards, there there hasn't really been anything uh, other than the 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 blue white uh, haven deck. Well, what about the uh, the aggro decks, uh, black red us? Uh, um, and seeing anything like that maybe to be more effective this time around without um, no in in in, 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 in the in the local tournaments mm-hmm. it's, it's gonna be hard to tell because week one uh, aggro decks are better than the rest because people are experimenting with their with their decks with their mana with everything so decks don't run as smooth as they should and aggro decks work like aggro decks regardless of when you use them so so week one mm-hmm. week week two is normally it's it's normal to see aggro decks dominate mm-hmm. so there's really no way to tell if th- these decks are actually working right now or if it's just you know it's just because it's week one well the set itself is very very fast and aggressive so that might have no no, um... no I, I was saying that the the set among it as the format meaning limited is very 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 aggressive but uh uh in terms of how it adds to standard i i don't think it it makes things faster or, or at oh, least really? not not by much cuz cuz what what makes it faster or what do you think is like name a card that you think makes standard faster right like i bet you couldn't Think of one like off the top no. of your head, right? So, no, no, no. so it, it's it's. I don't think it does. I mean, there are cards that give double strike, but I mean, there's there there have always been cards like that. There's this yes, card I that I... well, there is this card that um, makes you attack twice in one turn for red. But oh. then, like I said, that's that's red. That's what red does. It's not because uh, it makes the format fast. It's just that it works with what a deck that does just that. I guess what uh, mother mean is not necessarily aggressive but um this new set has a very strong emphasis on what the colors mean to be those colors like blue is supposed to be control draw cards etc red's supposed to be aggressive you know yeah black and, is destruction yeah, but, but, but the thing and is the set is really really reinforcing those, those themes yeah but the thing is it's it's one set out of the uh seven that are standard legal right now so it doesn't Oh. I guess when uh, Hour of Devastation comes out, and it if it's similarly themed to Amoket, then that's uh, one third of the expansions doing the same thing. Then it would then it would emphasize what Amoket does. But at the moment, what what you'll be doing is just getting bits and pieces of powerful cards from Amoket, and that doesn't really change the meta that much. Unless I mean, the only reason, the only, or the only time that. Uh, there would be a significant meta change if is when there's a new deck that's 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 really strong that's coming out because of the the um the new set. Otherwise, it's just upgrades to the new set. Except uh, especially for now, where because there's a new set, but there's no rotation, so none of the old cards yeah. um are rotated out of standard. So when that happens, normally, uh, like I said, it's just an upgrade to what you currently have and not like a paradigm shifting. Um, you know, set. 
I guess it's it's not really that, but I, I, I'm just saying that it really reinforces the, the flavors of each color, um, at least from a limited perspective. No, no, but it, yeah, it, the... it, it, it's normally because it all sets normally do that. It's just that the sets that were coming out of well, a bunch of the sets that were coming out of were well, the last two were artifact sets, so I guess you feel that a bit less in this mm-hmm. the in this uh, uh, return to uh, wait shadows. And the other one were okay. The one before that was uh, colorless base. Mm-hmm. So, so I guess like the, for the past um, se- six sets, uh, four of mm-hmm. them weren't reinforcing the colors. So I guess that's why you weren't feeling that as much. I guess. But, I, I, but if, if it weren't, po- but if it were, if it weren't special sets, then uh, magic does actually do a good job of doing that putting that theme into the the yeah. hardness but yeah um for banning um it's a brave new word for standard but standard isn't the only thing that got banned um mm. do you want to go through the other cards that were banned and just talk about them briefly yeah sure uh what were they again i believe the other one was sensei's divining top yeah that actually was killed, banned, yeah that actually see. kills a whole deck uh, miracles right um miracles Counter- and Counter-top. countertop what uh what is uh countertop is counterbalance and top I yeah. guess yeah what what is counterbalance uh counterbalance uh, is yeah. you, you reveal the top card of your deck and uh if it's the same cost as a spell like whenever someone plays a spell you may reveal the top card of your deck and if it's the same cost then you counter that spell for free so you use your top mm-hmm. to manipulate the top of your deck to <laughs> you use your top to manipulate the top of your deck to <laughs> To count, to keep okay. countering everything essentially. Right. Oh, okay. Oh, so it's a, it's, it's like a, it's a permission deck. Permission deck. Deck. It's a permission deck where you don't lose cards to counter. Oh, they don't get discarded. They're just no, revealed. You just show them. Wow. Let okay. me let me read oh. the uh, uh, counterbalance. But yeah, it's it's that principle. And, and for I guess it's not because of miracles. If, if I don't, I haven't read the the. The exact reason why they're banning the top, but if it's because of a counter top, then it it makes more sense. But if they're banning it because of miracles, I I don't think you know, that's well. Um, one of the hosts of Magic Mike um, has a theory that there are certain types of decks that Wizard does favor and slow decks that make people want to stop playing Magic is something that they try to avoid. Apparently, Divining Top was very... was not really nice to... Oh, um, yeah, to... to look at. Yeah, um, yeah. For coverage. Yes. And, comment, for, and commenting. Because you just... you don't really see the cards and you just let, see them, like, activate top, manipulate the top three. No, I, I actually... I actually think that it's because these decks are uh, very dominant in, in Legacy anyway. Like, if you've actually been in... Uh, like, before they banned... Uh, uh, was it vintage or legacy that uh, they last banned Dick through time in? B- before they banned it, they were like most of the card, the decks at least were Dick through time decks. I actually don't know what the combo is, but the fact that they're actually naming the the decks after Dick through time is 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 weird. I mean, it's a draw spell, but it's that powerful okay. that, that people were naming their decks around it and and a lot it's like most of the players it's like in in vintage at that time or was it legacy i forgot people were only playing um dig through time decks and counterbalance mm-hmm. decks like if you if you watch a legacy gp or something it's the same decks that you would see in in the feature match so i guess this is yeah. like they're just i mean it's because oh, it this. doesn't feel like it's uh overrunning the format for us because we don't really play that or we don't really watch too much coverage of those formats but i guess for for and that's why it i guess it's also not as urgent for them to ban it but for people playing the format i guess uh, they they've noticed it oh another another one of the oppressive decks there was the uh the, the one that i i made a deck of the the um the the shops the shops deck mm-hmm. uh so okay. that which they also banned lodestone golem like a couple of months ago which they solved. So, uh, basically, all of the good decks of the opp- uh, not even not really oppressive, but all of the decks that like like if you if you googled and like uh, if you if you're going mm-hmm. to a legacy tournament and had or a vintage tournament and had all the money to buy whatever cards and just Google what deck to make, you would make mm-hmm. one of those decks. So now it's gonna be like uh 
you know, it's gonna be even. Like you couldn't really just decide that I want this deck because it's the best. Now it's I guess removing the, the it's funny, the the removal of the counterbalance deck made the format balanced. <laughs> okay. Um also I think not just balanced but more interesting. Um yeah, and yeah more interesting. Fun interesting I think isn't fun. Cause cause the but no, but cause, cause the thing is vintage and legacy players don't are not really the, the people who want uh, interesting and fun. To I have think. fun. No, I mean they just want to destroy. It. No, I, I, no. Of course, they want to have fun, but like I don't think that's the priority for for people spending thousands of dollars in cardboard. You know. Yeah, I guess. Uh, so, but, but but you know, it's um, I guess that's also another thing to go to go back to um, the Felidar. Um People were upset because the decks that they were using had some cards that are no longer. Of value, but really, the it's just Sahili, though, right? I guess um, maybe some other cards, but no, I, I don't think it. Yeah, Sahili is the one that I think would be hit the most. No, but even then, Sahili was down to like what uh, ten dollars. So now he's gonna That's be, possible. he's gonna go down to her old her old levels. price, which is like four dollars yeah around four dollars four to five dollars no yeah. but it was four dollars that you couldn't sell so technically she goes down to zero so i i guess but come on i mean like forty dollars to have a fine uh, format it's okay i guess well I, it's not just that they they lose value on the sahili i guess it's 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 that they have to um, make a new deck that's true Banning. something that we did really do but the wizard did and they were supposed to do it, but because of the timing, it wasn't really good. And speaking of timing, uh, we missed out on attending International Tabletop Day. So maybe next year we'll actually cover International Tabletop Day. No, we actually, uh, like, there were plans, but... Uh, yeah, guess, there were plans. But then there were other plans, and, you know. Unfortunately. Um, maybe we do the... Uh, we, we Next year we go for the... 24 hour thing what do you think what do you mean 24 hour thing try to get them uh, to stream to, try to get uh join one of those 24 hour um no i, I was actually try uh, i was things. actually gonna say to try to get uh, geek and sunday to to get the red zone in there uh, as one oh. of the people uh, oh yeah i mean you know hey we play games here look we're we, in the philippines we, we play yeah. games we're in the philippines we have a youtube channel you know, come on! I, 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 I don't, I don't see why they would say no. I mean, they'd feature like all the game shops. I mean, there are a lot of, a lot of things I could say, but in the end, I just say I, I don't see a reason why they would say no. Yeah, I'm sure we'll be able to do something next year. Hey, and look, um, tabletop day 2018. Let's let's get this done. Table, uh, wait, tabletop day 2018. Uh, the red zone. In tabletop day. Yeah, the red, the, yeah, the red zone, red, the red zone cometh, cometh. Yeah, I, I wonder yeah. how many people we have subscribed by then. I hope more. Um, and speaking of subscribe, uh, to our list, um, if you like our podcast um, and uh, the content that we have here, please uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, also, comment down below if you have any thoughts about tabletops and uh, table uh, tabletop games your own experiences with tabletop games or if you felt that of um, the banning of Feldar Guardian and uh, the, ban- the sudden banning in general um, caught you off guard uh, we'd, or, li- uh, we'd love if, to hear if, from if you if you don't like the banning or like the banning debate in the comment section exactly or also if, if you think that if you really believe that um, uh, Uncle Moneybags has a monocle. No, he doesn't. I mean, you could Google it right now. He doesn't. We just think. No, I'm saying, saying, uh, put in the comments below. If you, st- if any of you are are old enough to remember Ace Ventura, when nature calls. I actually, yeah, I actually n- remember. It. No, no, but you know, if oh, here's the thing. If you actually find a picture of Moneybags with a monocle, you know, link us. <laughs> yeah, let us know. Let us know about that. Uh, yeah, so uh, this has been episode four of the Red Zone podcast. Uh, this is Elvin. And I'm JR. And thank you and see you again soon.
So we were talking earlier about how this generation is more of the YouTube generation, or the or at least mostly or the younger kids at least. And I remember a couple of, or not a couple, a bunch of videos back. There was this kid who commented on the channel and wanted us to to view his channel and wanted us to subscribe. I replied by saying, "Sure, I'll do that." And and he was so happy. Uh, he he actually kept replying saying like, things like oh my god this is the first thing that or the first time that um, a youtuber has replied to me and, and, and he appreciated it a lot so uh, I, I, I was just I'm just yeah. saying that uh, th- this is just a testament to how how YouTube and and the internet is a bigger part of of this new generation compared to uh, us older guys but yeah so so to, to youtubers uh, you know be extra nice to your this. yeah yeah be be extra nice to your listeners uh, they appreciate it a lot so how about you how would you feel if you were um if you're sending a message and then you know somebody from a channel that you liked um re- replied to your comments yeah, probably happy but not as enthusiastic i mean right i uh, yeah. Uh, you're, you're jaded with age, right? Yeah. But yeah. Well, yeah. It's yeah. It's it. I guess the lesson is be nice, especially if they like your stuff, because we like it that people like our stuff, and so if you and, and that's why and that's why we're doing it, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, besides the fact that you know we we enjoy talking about it, it's really about you guys, you folk that are listening to our show. Um, you guys are super important to us too. We do want to hit, hear from you. We do want to uh, reach out to you and uh, work with you with you guys from time to time. That's really all there is to say about that. Thank you and good night.